Uh, this is me. July 29th, 2008. It is 1233. Mountain time. Um, covering all my bases, making sure that if something happens to me or my family or all of us that our assets are documented. Hope everything works out and we're all happy and live happily ever after as much as that's possible. Charlie, say hi. On the morning of December 6, 2009, Susan, Charles, and Brayden had attended church services. A neighbor had visited them at home in the afternoon, leaving at about 5 p.m. This was the last time Susan was ever seen by someone from outside the Powell household. At first, the entire Powell family was reported missing on December 7 by relatives. Joshua's mother, Tarika, and sister Jennifer Gruis went looking for the family at their house shortly after being informed that the children had not been dropped off at daycare that morning. They called the police when they failed to make contact with Joshua and Susan. Then the police broke into the house, fearing that the family were victims of carbon monoxide poisoning. However, they found no one inside, but noticed two box fans blowing at a wet spot on the couch. Susan did not show up at her job on December 7. Her purse, wallet, and ID were all found at the house. Her cell phone was later found in the family's only vehicle, a Chrysler Town and Country Midavan that Joshua had been using. Later that day, at about 5 pm, Joshua returned home with the two boys and was taken to the police station for questioning. He claimed he had left Susan sleeping at home shortly after midnight on December 7 and had taken his boys on a camping trip to Simpson Springs in western Utah. Police visited Simpson Springs on December 10, but found no evidence of the campsite that Joshua had described. They also found it suspicious that Joshua would take his young boys out camping after midnight when he was scheduled to go work at his job just hours later. Joshua had not told his boss that he would not be coming to work at the and explained to police it was because he had thought it was Sunday rather than Monday. Glad you could come. <laughs> oh, you don't want to be on record here? Okay, let's see the ring. Let's see that ring. Hold your hand up, please. Okay, and this ring. Um, are we going to disassemble this right now? Yeah. Do a Claude dance. Is that enough? Thanks to Dad, we were able to bring the arch over here. Wendy Quashnick. Josh Powell. <laughs> <Sean William> Riley. Turn this and talk to so because uh hold on dad what are you filming yeah you, you want me to what what's the problem he doesn't want you to waste all the tape in 2005 the powells welcomed charlie and just two years later Braden arrived Susan hoped the addition of their children would be the glue that kept their family together because things had already started to sour between them. Susan writes a letter addressed to family and friends warning them of Josh. In the letter, Susan says Josh threatened to destroy her if she filed for divorce. She then said that if she dies, it may not be an accident, 
even if it may look like one. The letter was kept in Susan's safe deposit box, which only she had access to. me July 29th 2008 it is 12:33 mountain time um, covering all my bases making sure that if something happens to me or my family or all of us that our assets are documented hope everything works out and we're all happy and live happily ever after as much as that's possible <laughs> 